Hi, I'm architect Siriek. I run a studio called Parinama. And it is my honor to introduce architect John Bullcock for the third edition of the Living Monsoon series. Architect John has a career spanning over 36 years. He has won numerous awards and has various distinguished projects under his association. I welcome him once again on behalf of IA Coaching Center. Welcome. Thank you. I hope your travel was fine. Tiring, but okay, I made it. Okay. Mm. We are equally excited to have you here. Uh, I just wanted to ask a few questions before we start off with the main function. Reflecting sure. on your extensive career, what project uh, stands out to you as the most difficult? And how have you overcome those challenges? Mm, well, honestly, they're all challenging. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm serious, they are. They're all very challenging and all difficult as well, actually. But if, you, if I, I think I could pick out two actually, which uh, okay. uh, maybe I can highlight a little bit about. One uh, is called the Bamboo House, which is in Kuala Lumpur. Yes, I've right. probably lived there. And that, that, that was challenging. It was a off-form concrete, a fair-faced concrete house, the whole house. Okay. And contractors are not used to this type of, um, particularly in those days, uh, 10, 12 years ago, whenever it was, or even more, actually. And he struggled with it. We all sort of struggled with it, you know. And about halfway through, the house just looked like an abandoned house. It really did. And I had to really keep the client on board, if you know what I mean. I really, because the client was wondering, what should we do here? You know, should we plaster it? Should we do what? Or, or whatever. So I managed to persuade the client to actually, no, just keep going, keep going okay. with it, right? We will get it there. We will get it there. And then the contractor, I think, in the end, ran off. He couldn't, really couldn't do it. He had to get another contractor in, which is really difficult. Yeah. Okay. And, um, but in the end, he loved the house. When we finished it, he loved the house, and he moved in. He hadn't planned on moving in, actually. He had other, uh, other uh, reasons for that, for doing the house. But he um, loved the house, and he lived there for a year or two before he, he eventually sold it, as he already, already um, always planned to. And um, it's an award-winning house as well, this yes, one. Right? So he was, he was very happy at the end. So you really have to... Uh, he was a good client, but, of course, when you, when you see things maybe not turning out halfway through, they get worried, right? And you really have to be sort of like strong it. and keep your direction. Uh, otherwise, you lose, the whole thing's lost. Yes. Really. So I was quite... That was an extremely challenging project, but very fulfilling in the end. The other one, uh, other project maybe um, was Factory in the Forest, which is an electronics factory in Penang. It was it was challenging for different reasons. Actually, the client wanted a, a low energy a low energy building, and it was a very good client. And so it wasn't challenging from that point of view. Had the, the client had our back, the architect's back the whole way through, which is great. Okay. When, that, when yes. that happens, yeah? <laughs> that was always better. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you you need that. You need yeah. clients yeah. who will back you when things because again, it was challenging because this a lot of off form concrete in that as well, and this contractor had never done it before either. Okay. So uh, we were able to guide them much better with this one, and then okay. you know with the detailing and everything like that. Um, but it was it was challenging. It was our actually it was our first factory. That was our first okay. factory we'd oh. done. So that was um, challenging, but we had a very good team. We had a very good team, consult other consultants, and the contractor was also okay. very good, yeah. open, trying things. Um, so, if I'm not mistaken, I think uh, you've received a commendation from the Cochin Center last year. We did. Festival. Yeah, yes, that, yes. that project got a lot project. of international awards, actually. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, for its architecture it and its energy consumption. It uses about half the energy of a okay. typical factory of that size, yes. yeah. Okay. So I would say probably they are the two. Even though the client had our back, we still had to do make sure it worked because it was quite different sort okay. of for a factory. I mean, people can't believe it's a factory. They think it's a resort or a convention center or whatever. But, but anyway, so yeah, I would say probably those two for okay. different reasons were challenging, okay. yeah. 
Yeah, moving on to our another question is, uh, how do you stay uh, relevant to the current uh, architecture trends? And uh, trends? Trends, or do you follow them? Or uh, design trends? Design trends? No, or, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> right. okay. I mean, and how do you stay relevant with the emerging technologies that is around then? Oh, technology especially? a different thing. Yes. Okay. Yes. Design trends. So, certainly. I mean, it's, it, we don't. I'm not oh, okay. interested in design trends. Really, okay. we do our own thing, and people like it or they don't like it. It's, it's fine okay. either way. But technology, um, I'm not the sort of I'm I'm not the sort of architect who who is into all this technical things, all this tech. I'm not at all. I'm a okay. very old school type of architect. You give me a piece of butter paper and my pencil, I'm very happy. Yeah. A bit blank piece of paper and a pencil, I'm more than happy. Um, but of course, technology does help us a lot, you know? I mean, whether it's just simple things like AutoCAD, things yes, like that, yes. you know? Um, that, that's fine. If, you, if you're thinking about AI... Yes, I was about to ask you the same question. I, I don't know. Do you see know, where it is going? And, I don't uh, really. I don't know much. Of, to be honest with you, I really don't know much about it. And I'm, okay. I don't know much about it because I'm not interested, really. Okay. Right? The, the little I do know about it, um, I, I mean, I, I'm sure, very sure it has its uses. And, but but for a, from a design perspective, I, I, I don't really understand why you would use that for a... I have seen people claim they've de the AI has designed this building or that building, but, but you look at the uh, building and you think, so what? You know, yes. I f even I feel so because you lose the human connect between uh, absolutely the design and the architect. Yeah. The, the role the between uh, the architect is trying yes. to is trying to attempting to design space for the yes. client for the occupants of that yes, building, yes. whoever it is. Right. Yes. I don't see how a machine can do that in the with the same sort of sensitivity. I don't know. I may be wrong, but I don't know enough about it. Okay. But I'm not interested enough to find out. I, I'm just from a different generation. Okay. You know, and yeah. So cool. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, just coming back to our, uh, the other question that you just answered, what is the concept behind uh, the forest factory? Factory in the forest? Yes. Uh, um, and how did you manage to convince the client uh, to? It was an architectural competition. Okay. Actually, um, it was an invited competition with a few practices. Okay. We. Um, I mean, all our work is connected to our contact with nature. Okay. For us, it's it's psychologically we need that contact with nature as human beings. Okay. I mean, I mean, I think that's that, that's probably obvious to a lot of people. But I like to actually get that connection with nature through architecture, through architectural space. This 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 is this has been my sort of philosophy from school days, okay. right? you know, architecture school days, really. And then it's been sort of progressively um, de developed. So it was really just whether it's a small project, a bungalow, a house, or a larger factory or a commercial project. Really, the philosophy is the same. Okay. The materials may differ, the, the function may differ, but that connection with nature, and I just don't mean connection with a forest or trees, or, I, mean, yes, yes. I mean with light, with scent, with touch, with you know, the sound, sound of water, the sound of, of um, whatever it happens to be. It is know? actually comment-worthy because nobody really puts an electronic manufacturing plant into a forest uh, but so also, also you're right. But also, um, we wanted to design this factory for all their employees, not just the managers to have like a Good, nice yes, yes. view and and contact with greenery and that. We wanted it all the factory workers, you know, all five hundred, eight hundred, however, on the factory floor. We wanted them also to share this and experience, and yeah. I think we did that. I think we did that. They all, I mean, the client actually took a survey after occupation with all their workers, and they, uh, anomalous survey, and it, the workers, they made some incredibly interesting comments about the building, you know, which was very interesting. Post inhabiting the space, is it? Yeah, they're really positive. They love yes. it. You know, they've sure. said things like home from home, and that was one of the comments. They just love to go out in, because they're encouraged to go out in their break time, 
what, what happens in a normal factory? You have, if you're lucky, you have some sort of contact with daylight, yeah, right? Yeah. If you're lucky. Yeah. But so many factories around the world you don't have any contact, no windows, nothing. They go in in darkness in the morning, right? They start at seven or eight or whatever. And they leave in, after dark. They don't even see the sun all day, you know, or almost like that, you know. And they don't see the changing sky condition. True. All these things are so important, yes, yes. you know, to our psychological well being. Yeah. You know? So, and we wanted, and, you know, so many trees have been cut down, you know, around yeah. the world. I mean, in where we where this was, I'm sure here as well, you know, and it's we wanted just to put something back there, you know. When we went to the site, it was a blank site. Yeah, the blank developer blank. had cut everything, okay. right? It was completely flat, no vegetation at all. So the first thought, let's put a forest here yeah. and insert a factory into it. Not wow. let's build a building and put and some trees put some around it. Yeah, it, yeah. it was, you know, it it might sound like a similar thing, but it's a different concept, a different way to approach the project. We make a forest and then we insert. Yeah, okay. so this this was the, yeah. Are there any technologies that you use generally uh, to reduce the building's environmental impact? Or um, well, as architects, we we well, we're not engineers, of course. We're architects, so we always ensure, or we attempt to ensure that we get the passive design right okay. first. Okay. Yes. Get get the shading right, whether it be landscape, whether it be canopies or insulation, whatever the shading, uh, orientation right, um, reduce the the hard surfaces around the building, all these things, you know, natural light, natural ventilation if appropriate, things like that okay. to the to the building. Um, so we get this right, and then we have because um, that alone will reduce it, the amount, for instance, of air conditioning or energy for lighting, all, yeah. all these things, straight away that can reduce it by quite a bit. And then the engineers can come in and they can, they can uh, do, their, do their work with cutting edge technology. Like with the factory in the forest, for instance, yeah. that one is very low energy, as I mentioned. And it, um, it has uh, radiant cooling in the floor, which okay. is maybe not so cutting edge now, but it is, it is yeah, quite, still, quite yeah. still. You know, that cools down the whole structure, which means we can actually reduce the conventional air conditioning, you know, yes. in the ceiling. Yeah. We have roof lights right across, north facing roof lights, so we get natural light right across the factory floor, for instance. So that reduces the uh, artificial lighting load, for instance. Um, but you know we're not the experts in this type of active technologies. You know we yeah. we yeah. like to work with good engineers very closely. You know okay. from the word go, really. Okay. Like right. we did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On a lighter note, uh, I was told that you had a brief stint with working with architect Devi Doshi, who is a, a yeah. pioneer. Yeah, yeah. In, uh, in India, it could was you, a great experience working with Doshi. Could you? I mean, the whole on? experience. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. What was that? Uh, could you elaborate on? Yeah. 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 Well, I. I just a, arrived and it was this after college. Or yeah, okay. yeah. I'd been already working. I had my little company in London. Okay. And this was late eighties, early nineties, and I wanted to. You know, it was a struggle in that time, recession. Where I, so I decided I'd go. I'd write to five architects. Okay. Around the world, who I respected, whose work I respected, who thought I could learn from him. I didn't want to go and just work with any architect. I wanted to work with somebody I could really respect and get and learn something. So, and Doshi was uh, one of them, one of them oh. yeah. And he replied, in fact, they, most of them replied, but they, uh, they didn't offer, but um, he, he did and said, yeah, yeah, come, come. <laughs> but I, I couldn't go straight away. So I had to wait, I think a year or something like that, because I was busy doing something in the UK. And I, I went there and it was, it, the whole experience was just a sort of life changing, actually, yeah. to be honest with you. Okay. I mean, not just because of Doshi, but that was great. He was a great man to work with. I mean, he would, he would just say, he would just say things like, you know, you, 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 you search, but you find. Yeah. Many people would say you search and search, but he would say, no, you search and find find the solution or yeah. find whatever it is. You know, these things sort of, and a few sayings like this would, would stay with me, even now they stay with me. So 
it was good. But the whole experience was great, you know, working with his staff. And it was really, uh, a, really a great experience, actually, working with him. Yeah, he's a great man, as you say. Yes. He's a great man. I mean, all of us really look up to him and because yeah. one of these. And then yeah. yeah, he's brilliant. And because yeah. uh, I really, his contempt, you know, the people he um, admired, like Corb, Corbusier, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, Khan, Khan. Yeah, yeah. they're my favorite architects as well. You okay. Know? So working in Ahmedabad, where there's so much Khan and Corbusier Around projects, this, right, yes, in Ahmedabad yes. there, I could just spend lots of time exploring yeah. these buildings as well as his buildings. Okay. I came down to Bangalore to vi visit the Institute, Indian Institute. I am in yeah. Bangalore. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. I thought it was, yeah. And other places, well, some of his low cost housing schemes were really interesting. Okay. Very wow. brilliant, man. That's another question. Are you, do you keep uh, visiting India or uh, at. Uh, Say it again, sorry. Do you keep visiting India or. or the um, well, through Doshi office, I did meet people, uh, uh, friends, made okay. friends, okay. and actually one of them has become like a lifelong friend, and she she's an architect, who was a young okay. architect then, uh, okay. and she lives down in Trivandrum, okay. so I'm going to visit oh, her. Oh, post this. Oh, nice. Tomorrow, actually. Okay. I'm going down to visit her okay. tomorrow, yeah. Um, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, we are wrapping up. Uh, so, so I come time. I I come. I don't come that often, but I like to come. Yeah, I mean yeah. it's such a fascinating place to explore. You know, I during the time of Doshi, we, I managed to sort of go, not right around the country, but quite a lot. I saw yeah. quite a lot. Yeah. The Himal up to Darjeeling and Sikkim, and then down to Trivandrum and other uh, well, Okay. Yeah. Mm. We are. Uh, Portfolio says that you have diverse projects across all over Turkey, Southeast Asia, uh, yeah, Sri Lanka. Yeah, because I worked in, uh, well, since I've been in Asia, based in Asia, we've had projects in okay. China, Sri Lanka, Thailand, and India, and other uh, countries. But before that, I, I was based in London, but it was for a Turkish company. So I used to travel to Turkey okay, okay. a lot. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that's how that came about. You, what else? What other countries was it? No, uh, I was just about to ask you on how do you manage uh, the wide range of uh, portfolio that you have, or is it? Uh... Well, I love travel. Okay. And I, I mean, I, when I was, when I was, well, after qualification, I, when I was running that company on my own, I, I used to sort of save up money and go off on architectural trips. Okay. On my own. Generally, sometimes with a with a group, but generally I used to like go alone. I would just okay. choose a country, like uh, or or a region like Scandinavia, for instance, and I would just take myself off for two or three weeks, and I would just go to this building, that building, this building, and I did this a lot. I had a lot of architecture, and this was very eye opening as well. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, so, so before you uh, start designing, generally, is there any uh, concept or uh, something that you generally search for? Or how does the ideas uh, formulate when well, you start to get from this? I mean, we 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 have our philosophy, right? Yeah. This contact with nature and this is sort of it grows hopefully with project to project. Um, but it's um, of course the site is critical. Okay. Yes. The, and I just don't mean the site. I mean the site and its surroundings. Right. We spend a lot of time on the site, um, different times of the day. The uh, the context as well is is critical. The climate, of course, is critical as yes. well. The client is critical, and then our philosophy comes in. So, but probably they're the four main the four main things we have. We ha we have the site, we have the climate, the client, and self. We have those those what we put into the project. But we go with an open mind okay. with each project. We okay. do that. We don't have a preconceived idea. So we don't start work until we go to the site, really. That, okay. that, that's yeah. the starting point. Yeah. yeah. Before we end, I would just like to ask you, uh, what advice would you give to the younger architects? That uh, I, would, I, would, um, I would say don't let anybody tell you what architecture is for you. Okay. Right? You find yourself, as Doshi said. Yeah, right, you search. search and find. Yeah, you have to do that. If you don't find, you're floundering around. Right, so you you must. So, 
that is the main that is the main thing I would say to young architects. You, you search and you find what architecture is for you, then you stick with it. I mean, you develop it, of course, but you don't, you know, if your tutor or your boss or another architect, your peers tell you, oh, that's not good. You know, no, no, you, you've got to have the confidence and the belief in yourself, I think. And it takes a lot of belief in yourself. Thank you. I hope uh, I didn't take too much of your time. It was an honor again to meet you. Your honor's mine for <laughs> inviting me here, so thank you very yes. much.